Hi everyone, this is Jesse from Sportmonks and in this video I would like to show you some new endpoints and features that have been added to our API with a recent release. So let's jump right in and the first thing I'm going to show you is a new endpoint that we have made which is the entity types endpoint. So this endpoint contains information about all the types that are available on a certain entity. So let's start by making a request to this endpoint. Also please note that I am running a subset of our data locally so the list that you get returned to you when you make a request to this endpoint might differ from what I am showing on the screen right now. So the first thing we see in my case is a coach statistic detail and this key refers to the entity that the object following applies on. I will show you another example as well but first let's get into the fields that this object contains. So the two fields that we see here are the updated ad field, which contains a date time and the types array, which consists of types that belong to the entity. So starting with the types array, um, this array contains all of the types that are available in our databases for this specific entity. So in this case, this means that the current types that are available for coach statistics are substitutions, red cards, yellow cards, yellow red cards, etc. So what this endpoint does is that it provides you quick insights into which types you can expect for the entity that you are interested in. Whereas before this endpoint existed, you would have to query all the entities that we have available to be able to determine all of the types that are available for that specific entity. So let me show you another example, which is the event entity in this case. And you can, of course, include the events on fixture level. And you can see in this endpoint that the current types that we have available for the uh, event entity are a var event, a goal event, own goal event, penalty events, and the list goes on. So that's pretty much sums it up for the entity types endpoint. And let's get started with new endpoints that we have also implemented. And those are statistic endpoints. So the idea is pretty straightforward. We have implemented endpoints to retrieve statistics for statistics that relate to seasons, stages, and rounds. Let's make a request to one of our statistic endpoints. And in this case, I am going to retrieve season statistics for team 73, which is the Dutch club Feyenoord. So when you receive the response, you can see that you receive multiple objects and all of these objects contain different statistics for seasons that the team has statistics available for. And the details of the statistics are already automatically included in the response. Now, if you would still like to enrich um, the response, you can do that by using includes. So for example, if you would like more information about the type that a statistic belongs to, you can use an include called details.type to get the type object as well. Of course, other includes are available as well. For example, you can use the season include to get more information about the season that those statistics belong to. We can also leverage the power of filters to filter out any seasons that you might not be really interested in. A useful example of this might be to pass season IDs of leagues that the team currently participates in. So if we would take final, for example, we can pass the current season ID for the Dutch Eredivisie and the current season ID for the Europa League. When we apply this filter, we can see that any of the season IDs which don't match our filter uh, are not included in the response and we only get the season statistics that we are interested in. So that is a brief overview of how to use our new season statistics endpoints. And please note that this endpoint also applies on other participants as well. So that will be players, coaches and referees. And of course the example I showed you, teams. The other two new statistics endpoints that we offer are for stages and for rounds. And here you can pass a stage ID or a round ID. And when making a request, you can see that the response differs a little bit from the previous ones that I showed. These objects directly contain the value of the statistic and they may also be related to a participant. And in that case, the relation ID field is not nil. 
To get more information about the participant that the round or stage statistic belongs to, you can use the include participant and make the request again. And then you can see that when a uh, statistic belongs to a participant, the uh, information about that participant is included as well. So when a relation ID is nil, it means that that specific statistic belongs to either the stage object or the round object, depending on the endpoint that you are calling. And that is pretty much it for statistics in this API release. Let me show you two other endpoints that we have implemented, and those are past and upcoming fixtures by TV stations. So these endpoints allow you to pass an ID of a TV station and it will show you the fixtures that have been broadcasted or will be broadcasted on that specific TV station. So let's get started by uh, using the past fixtures by TV station endpoint. And you can see that when I pass uh, the ID of a TV station here, the fixtures are listed in uh, descending order. So the most recent broadcasted fixtures uh, are returned first. And when using the other endpoint, so that will be upcoming fixtures by TV stations, the ordering is just the other way around. So the first fixture that is returned is the fixture that is closest to kickoff. So that's it for those fixtures by TV stations endpoints. And I have one last thing to show you, and that is a new include that we have introduced to the API. And that include is the current period include, and you can use it on fixtures to get the period that is currently in play. So let me show you a quick example of how to use this. And we are going to call the live score endpoint in this case. So to use this include, you simply have to type current period when defining your includes. And for the convenience of this example, I am going to include the state of the fixture as well. So looking at the response, you can see that the current period object uh, contains the period that is currently in play. And note how the um, current period can also be nil. For example, when a match has finished, there is no longer an active period or when a match is uh, currently in halftime, there is no current period uh, as well. So keep that in mind. And yeah, the current period includes offers you a more convenient way of getting the current period um, instead of uh, having to use the periods include and then having to get the active period yourself. So that wraps up all the new features that we have made available with this recent release. I would like to thank you for watching this video. Uh, I hope these new features help you use our API in a more joyful and convenient way. If you happen to have any more feedback, you can always contact us at support at sportmonks.com. Uh, also, if you would like to uh, read all the changes, you can visit our change log. And yeah, again, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.